Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. As you can see, I'm hopping with the card hopping group and this is our November hop, obviously. So this is the card I'm gonna be making, but the theme for this month is sparkle. And then the techniques that we could choose from are foiling or drops. And I actually use both two times on this card. One of them is kind of moot. Um, one of the ways that I use foiling, we'll get into that here in just a minute, but yeah, I decided because I'm extra, <laughs> that's just what I wanted to do. So here I am showing you the supplies that I'm going to be using for this sweet card. I will have everything linked and listed. Um, some of them may be affiliate links. Some of them will not be, I'm sure, but yeah, we're going to get started here in a second and I'm going to start by stamping out my background. So this is the tartan plaid red rubber background stamp from Whimsy Stamps. It is one of my favorites. I love a good plaid, especially at Christmas. Love a good plaid all year. But anyway, yeah. So this is the way I always use my red rubber background stamps. I just put them down on my surface and then I take my paper over to the stamp itself. Now I'm just careful, not, not being too careful, but trying to line up that plaid not being fussy about it, but just trying to line it up to the best of my quick and down and dirty ability there. Now that was a very soft gray ink from Pink Fresh Studio. And now you can see that I have my quickie glue pen and I am using my T ruler just to make some lines within the plaid. And then I go in both directions. I go back and forth. And I'm going to come in after this glue dries. I, I do set it aside for a little bit to let it dry. And then I come back in with my foil. And I don't know if y'all knew that you didn't need either a laminator or your die cutting machine to foil. So there you can see kind of sort of <laughs> where the glue is because it was a little bit shiny. So here I have my deco foil. It's just transfer foil. And that's what it does, guys. It will adhere to anything that's tacky. So everywhere I put that glue down, it's going to stick. So you can kind of see there when it started to pull up and it's very subtle and, and it's not complete. So it's, it's kind of, kind of blotchy. So I come back in with my pen again, started to go rogue, <laughs> but I decided, no, I better pull that, pull that, um, T ruler back in here. So I went over my lines and I filled them in a little bit more with the glue. And again, I let it dry because you want it to be tacky. You don't want it to be wet. And then I'm just going back over my lines and I'm just rubbing it down. Now you want to burnish pretty good because what happens is it's very similar to, um, I guess like a foiling plate because it, it actually impresses into the paper. So I want to make sure that I get that foil down into the impression so it will stick to the glue. So again, it, it's still not extremely thorough coverage. So if I wanted it more thorough, I would have put it like through my die cut machine, but I just didn't want to do that. So I did show you that process. That's the part that becomes moot here in a little while, but I wanted you to see the process. So this is way one, <laughs> method one of me using the drops. So I put down some evergreen ink again from Pink Fresh Studio, and then I used two different colors of pretty, pretty clear um, Nouveau crystal drops. One is a silver, one is a gold, but really you don't see the, the paste itself or the... Well, I guess it is a glue actually that makes the drops, but you only see the glitter. So I mixed it and you can see that I just spread it all over like a spread. And then I use that fun slimline die from Whimsy. I can't remember the name of it, but again, I'll have everything listed downstairs. And I just ran it through my die cutting machine and well, I'm not going to go into that. I started to go into the process with the background stamp, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So here I'm using the new Merry and Bright, again from Whimsy. It's very fun. This is one thing that I would have changed because that holographic paper, it's fun. And look at that color right there. But that's not what I want on this card. And there ends up being so much silver, as you may have seen in the beginning, that I wish that I would have made this like a green or a lighter shade of red or something. Not a pink, but just a, maybe a different shade of red, but something to make the merry and bright in that glitter stock to pop off of that background. And I think that it does, but once it's all put together, it's kind of a sea of silver and gray. 
So that's just something that I would have changed. So it is what it is. And I like the card. So you guys let me know what you think. Should I have changed that background behind the Mary and Bright? Let me know your thoughts. So here I am just taping the border down to the, the rest of the background because of course when I ran it through my die cut machine it cut that cute little um, scalloped border and then I decided that I wanted to use this stencil over the stamping and the foiling but my mistake here was that the glitter drops uh, well these these are um, they're the drops from oh they're pops of color from scrapbook.com and it's just too dark. So it's a silvery gray, kind of a, I don't multicolored glitter actually. It's very pretty, but in this context, it, it just didn't work so well. It looks a little more grungy, which I don't mind grunge, but in this case, I, I wasn't going for grunge. So that would be change two that I would make on this card. So it is what it is. I set it aside to dry and you can still kind of see the foiling and the stamping through it, but not as much as I had hoped. So these two little images are from Colorado Craft Company. It's Ugly Sweater Season is the name of the stamp set, I believe. And so it was hard choosing. It was hard choosing which two of these images to use. I was only going to use one, but I couldn't narrow it down to one. So with much help from a crafty friend in Sweden, we've, we narrowed it down to, to the gnome who looks like a, a Santa Tomty and the little reindeer. And so here I'm using those snow markers again and I went a little bit crazy so the first time I did it I, I laid it down and then I went to work and when I came home and I heat embossed it it just didn't have much of an effect because it dried too too solidly so then I added more and it kind of took on a life of its own and, and it went rogue <laughs> so you saw me cleaning it up and it was already adhered but I just used my um, my tweezers and just kind of kind of scraped it off a little bit and I had a little bit of moisture on a paper towel that helped to pull it up. Now I didn't get it sopping wet, just very, very light moisture on there. So here I have taken that piece of cardstock where I added my, my um, glitter drops mixed with the ink and then I die cut those sweet little foliage images. And I had a hard time deciding on those two because I really like them both. I wanted the ivy, but I just loved kind of the soft curves of the other one. I have no idea what that plant is supposed to be. Maybe it's mistletoe. Y'all tell me that too, if you know. <laughs> so this is my second way of using foiling. And again, remember foil will stick to anything with tack. So I'm just taking my tape runner and you can see of course that I've die cut this frame out again. And I'm taking my tweezers, those have become my best friend, and I'm just running it through all the little crevices of the scallop, and I already went across the edge because I don't want the foil to get down into those crevices, and it's just going to kind of hang out there. So I went through each one of them, and I just kind of tapped the tweezer to the adhesive, and it pulled right off. So again, remembering that it that the foil adheres to anything that has tack to it. So I'm just rubbing it. I'm burnishing it down because I, I want it to be a thorough coverage, but again, I don't sweat it if it's not if it's not all that. So here you can see it's having a little bit of trouble in a couple places already. I've got it slowed down a little bit because this reveal is really pretty. Now remember, this was just plain white cardstock. And all I did was a little bit of tape runner and my foil and just use my fingers to burnish it down. So I'm using that same tape runner and going over a few of the places that didn't adhere. And the reason that there it didn't adhere in those places was because this is the same sheet of foil that I did the plaid with. And where the plaid had lifted, yeah, where, where the plaid pattern is lifted off of the foil, there was nothing in those places to foil. So again, just kind of down and dirty, didn't want it super covered, but that's what I have. So this is a paper pack from Brutus Monroe. It's a couple years old and the colors were perfect. And from this perspective, I really wish that I would have used, um, that red works really well, but I like the other one that had like the candy. And I like the greens as well. The greens felt like they were overwhelming from, from that other perspective. But yeah, I really would have liked them. 
but of course these are six by six so I need them to be longer so I'm just using some regular old scotch tape and adhering them on the back so that the the lines are all lined up and then I trim it down and that that tape on the back doesn't have to stick for long it does of course but it doesn't have to because I adhere it down to my card base here in just a minute so I have that that stamped and foiled and stenciled background adhered to the pattern paper which to be all to be honest I wish that I would have had a larger card so that some of that pattern paper some more of that pattern paper could show and I lifted that foiled frame up on some um, double-sided foam tape and then here I'm just putting all the rest of the pieces together so while we watch the rest of this process let me tell you about our wonderful card hopping group and our hop today so the next person in the lineup will be at the top of my description box downstairs so you want to make sure that you hop along that you see all of the great inspiration from all of our fantastic friends that are card makers and we do all kinds of crafting most of us are card makers at least on this hop but yeah hop along go give some love go get some inspiration maybe you'll find your next favorite crafter on this hop I don't know so card hopping is the brainchild of my sweet friend Jen and I'm telling you she is one of the best card makers that I personally know and I think she's amazing and I'm one of her biggest fans and anytime that I can participate in one of her hops I'm I'm all in I can't always do it and it makes me sad when I can't but here I am this time and I am supporting her and all of my other crafty friends and I encourage y'all to do it as well sometimes we're able to have prizes and giveaways this time we're not sadly but um, sometimes the crafters do different giveaways or individual giveaways on their channels so hop along see the inspiration see what others might have to offer you and of course like subscribe comment all those things if you could answer those questions that I left earlier and um, who knows maybe I'll do a surprise giveaway but you won't know if you don't leave a comment downstairs if you're not already a member of my crafty tribe guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button I'd love to have you back here we have a lot of fun it's very inspirational um, yeah my my crafty friends are some of the best crafty friends so I thank you guys I appreciate you stopping by with me today let me know your thoughts like subscribe comment hop along go see my crafty friends in the card hopping card hopping group <laughs> for November 2022 thanks guys this has been Nancy the handy scandy and until next time mwah, I'm out